It took me a minute, but I finally put two and two together regarding this ancient god known as Toth and what we're seeing in Antarctica. Now, recently, I've been using this map that shows this, what was believed to be a mythical area of the world known as Magellanica. Now, I've also made the allegation that I believe the name is being mispronounced, that it doesn't really have anything to do with Magellan, the explorer, that it's two words from two different languages being put together. The first one being Magaya, and the next one being Nika, meaning only by boat or only afloat. Now, we can debate that all day long, but there's something else in this map that I kind of alluded to in another video, but I'm going to show more proof of it, and it's going to correlate with all of the different bird-related structures that we have found in Antarctica. Now, down here at the bottom of this map, and this map was made by a man named uh, Petrus Burtius. He lived 1565 to 1628, I believe. And he was a well-respected map maker. At the bottom, there's a word, Psittacorum regio. Now, I looked up Psittacorum, and it was a tropical plant. But someone had come to my videos and said, true, it is a tropical plant, Psittacorum, but the real word means parrot. Because the shape of the plant, the color of the plant, um, mimics parrots from the region, and from a distance, sometimes um, people would make that mistake. And I just wanted to show it here, that this is what the plant looks like. This is an actual parrot set, of course. But that's what Psittacorum means. Now, one would have to ask, why? Why would someone write that word in that region? And it's not unique to just this map. I found another map. This one is very detailed, made by the same man some years later. And he refers to that again in this map, but this time in French. Now, let me zoom in that part of the map. This is, of course, all of the Americas at the time. But down here in the lower corner, he makes a very detailed map of this area below South America. Let me zoom that in real quick. Hold on. Okay, once again, down here at the bottom, by the way, let me see if I can get that on the map. There we go. You see this word, uh, c'est de bon uh, espérance in French? That's Cape of Good Hope. Now, this is, of course, Africa. They don't make any mistake about the distance between the Cape of Good Hope and this land. How could you then make the allegation that they screwed up the distance here? See, that was my allegation, is that at one time, as recent as the 1600s, the tip of South America and what we know to be Antarctica was connected, and it was not covered in ice. I know a lot of people would take issue with that. Oh, it's been covered with ice for thousands and thousands of years. Once again, the words, pe de, and I'm going to try to get my French right here, perroquette, meaning land of parrots or land of parakeets. Why would someone have written that if it was just this giant wind, ice, rock, and snow-covered expanse for as far as the eye could see? Parrots wouldn't live there. But then it dawned on me. I went back to Google Earth Pro and of course, this is the one of the most recent finds that we see. And in this particular image, there were two other, well, this area, I should say, circled. There was this image here that is kind of bird-like. You can see the beak and the eye. And then over here, you can see another head of a bird. And this is just one region where I have found this. And I just want to cover them all so that people can see what we're talking about. And if I can get the light right on this one, you can see 
that we have a left eye here. Let me zoom in better. Right eye and the beak here. Also, up here, another head of a bird. So, through independent investigation, looking into Google Earth Pro, I have found more than a few pictures of birds and areas where it looks like they're worshipping birds. And strangely enough, even in other regions, a map maker from the 1600s referred to the area as the land of parrots or the land of parakeets. And then we see images like this where we can pick out three or four different shapes of birds. Here, here, and here. Now, that seems like a bit of a coincidence to me, or more than a coincidence, I should say. Because there's more maps that I've found that say this exact same thing. This map here of the entire, this Mercator map, once again shows giant gap between Antarctica and the Cape of Good Hope in Africa, but not down here, this being all one land. Same thing here, and it's hard to see down here, but they make the same allegation about Piscatorium Regio, land of the parrots, down here. Same thing here. You can read it over here on this one. And these are different map makers. Giant area south of Africa between that and Antarctica, but absolutely no gap whatsoever between South America and this land known as Magallanica. And the words Sitacorum Regio, once again, right here. So many maps all making the same mistake? I just really don't think so. Now, something else I wanted to show. This is from a TV show. And I know it's, I'm sure a lot of you are aware of Stargate and this uh, creature that they dreamt up called uh, a Goa Uld. It's G-O-A apostrophe U-L-D, something like that. Anyway, it's supposedly this intelligent serpent-like creature that uh, takes over your body and it gives you incredibly good health and strength and um, you can't... It's basically a plot device used in the Stargate series. Now, that in and of by itself probably shouldn't be anything anyone really pays all that much attention to. But there was a place where I found some time ago, and it was just by accident, this image that reminded me very much of that creature. This head coming out of the water has kind of a flat shape, and it's got these pincers on the front. Now, you could say, okay, well, you liked Stargate, and so you saw something that you kind of correlated. Okay, that's fair. Possibly. I mean, it looks a lot like it, but what if I told you I found another place where I found one of these, but a skeleton of one? Now, doing this twice in two different areas of Antarctica would seem like it would be nearly impossible to do. But here on the side of the ice, there is this, what looks like skeletal remains of a creature. You've got a head here, you've got the two pincers here. You've got the long body, it looks like you can see ribs, and there's some kind of a tail to it. It's just damn strange. You know, there are things that come out in the media that perhaps are just soft disclosure or... It's just weird. I really don't have any other explanation for how those two creatures, the one from the show and the one that I found in Antarctica, can look so much alike. And here's the kicker. I'm going to measure this one for you guys. All right, in feet, this skeleton, about 133 feet long. So, pretty big. 
if we go back to this location where I found that thing in the water and we measure it and let me get this good and centered here from front to back now it looks like back here is the actual end of its tail so I'm gonna go ahead and measure this out in the same same way we'll start here and to the tail about a hundred and fifty nine feet and I'll see if I can get the there we go sometimes the light in here acts a little bit funny and it'll drawn out the uh, the details of numbers like this but once again in that ballpark about the same size and you know because this thing's curved it might be showing it to be a little bit longer than what it actually is so the head is the same the shape is the same, the length is the same, and the imagery is, it's just striking that you could find in a place like Antarctica so many different things and have them all be just apophenia or pareidolia or have ancient map makers 400 years ago refer to the region as a region of parrots or having birds and then be able to show so many locations here in Antarctica where it looks like they were venerating birds. And if that's the case, and that was the 1600s, everything we know about Antarctica or Magallanica needs rewritten because there's no way that map maker, all of those map makers could all possibly be wrong all at the same time. And one final proof for that is this. This should change everyone's mind about science. This fish is called the coelacanth. And science had absolutely ruled 100% that it died out 65 million years ago. Until some guy dredged one up in his net in 1938. Now, a lot of people think, well, that's a one-off. No. It's not a one-off. If that's the case, if they're wrong about this one, and they provably are, they're wrong about all of them because they're using the same methodology. The same methodology that said the coelacanth was extinct says all of the other ancient reptiles, ancient fish, ancient dinosaurs, whatever, that they're all extinct. Well, if the methodology is wrong for this one, it's wrong for all of them. The same thing that allowed this one to live could have allowed all of these other animals to still be alive. The rule that they were using to decide whether something could possibly be alive or not, that rule is wrong. And the time that has passed is also wrong. And they try to explain this by some ridiculous thing about how could it possibly not have evolved. This also rules out this idea of evolution. But they don't want to admit this. They don't want to come forth and say, you know, we need to rethink science. We need to redo all of the, the techniques and the methods that we're using. Because they're all wrong. Something like this could absolutely exist. And on a final note, for me, this is all I need to see to show me proof of civilization. And I found this location over a year ago. This is a carved entrance into the side of a mountain. It's not an accident. There's a perfect, nice, guaranteed, you know, walkway here. And it is, and I'll measure it for you. I know it looks small, but it's the size of a two-lane road, a major two-lane road. The opening is 23 feet across. You know, if you really tried, you could actually get three cars wide, three cars wide. And the distance from the from here 
to the back of the about a uh, 60 feet so 24 feet wide 60 feet long and I'll ballpark the height here it looks like about 45 feet tall and just all those numbers just basically divide by three to get meters This is the kind of stuff that proves to me, beyond shadow of a doubt, there's life down there. They've been living under the ice for a long time. They are in our history books, just in different, described in different ways. Antarctica was not always frozen. In fact, it was not frozen at all as little as 400 years ago. Because map makers told us so. And our own eyes tell us so. So I guess I will just leave it, leave it there. Um, one last thing I wanted to show. The image of Toth. Let's see if I can get back to that real quick. All right. The top of his head right here, do you see this half moon? Or I guess, should, I, guess I should say sliver moon um, thing. And a lot of the images, a lot of the images of him have him, him or her or whatever, wearing this. Let me show you something in Antarctica, and we showed it not very long ago. There it is. Right there. So, anyway, 16 minutes, 17 minutes, I'll leave it there. I know that last part was kind of a rant, but we just have to keep an open mind, guys. We really do. We have to not take everything that science says as guaranteed fact because they've been proven wrong so many times. And I'll leave it there. Like, share, subscribe.